following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling a problem with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 208. Nasdaq's up 31. S&P's up 5.5. Gold contract up $3.60 at 12.83. You got silver up 3 cents, $14.95. Light sweet crude, flat, $65.92. That baby just doesn't want to back off. It sure does not. Doesn't matter how many it, barrels of oil come five in. 5 million plus yesterday, right? right. No worries. Higher totally. prices. Notes and bonds, you get the 10-year note down two ticks, 123.15, 30-year off six at 147.05, and King Dollar, King Dollar down 50 ticks, 97.805. That's after breaking, broke the whole consolidation top-wise. Uh, bottom line is that uh, King Dollar can go a lot higher, and we get an anomaly in that market. When you take a look at King Dollar versus the metals versus risk assets um, and bonds, it's so unusual, folks, that... King dollar can go up, and you got risk assets going up simultaneously. So we'll figure out, well, we will figure out. The market's going to figure out which way it's going to go with sure. that, baby. Euro. Euro's at uh, 111. You got the yen trading at 111 and a half, and the pound is at 112, 129. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks at TD Ameritrade Think or Swim. Uh, don't forget, folks, every trading day right here, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time, you want to understand option, option strategies, futures. Great program. If you haven't test-driven yet, the Thinkers One platform, real easy to do. Come over to our website at TFNN, hit the banner, bring it up. They'll allow you to trade with paper money as uh, Kevin and his team bisect and dissect this market each and every day. And let me tell you something. It's, the market has a little bit for everyone out here this morning. It ain't stopping. Bulls, bears. Kevin Hanks, what's going on? Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Tommy. You're exactly right. I mean... This market, if you're in a bull camp, you've got a bull story, you've got a bear story, you've got the foreign market soft, which I think is really keeping a lid now on our futures this morning, because there's a lot of good news, but obviously the Dow is being heavily affected by 3M. So this is a day that's not really shocking. I thought the E-minis trying to open on the upside this morning was a little bit of a, fe a far fetch for me. I, I thought yeah. they'd be a little heavy with the foreign markets and some of the Dow stocks are already going to be down. So uh, this is going to be an interesting day, but there's a lot of uh, of people with some good news, and although sometimes some of the good news isn't enough for, for, for some of these names that have had some good runs like Chipotle. No, no doubt, man. And then, you know, you got, we got after the close today, folks, the monster. Amazon. Right. Amazon's only one monster. coming That's out right. after the close today. And it's funny. We say there's only one monster, man, but how about Microsoft? Oh, trillion dollars. Trillion they're dollar they're at 997. We just looked at a little pullback, but guess what? Maybe today Amazon's at 941 right now. We'll see how well they do this afternoon. That'll yeah. be interesting. It, it, we're going to feature Amazon on on our shows pretty much all day today. Obviously, it'll be one of the featured names on Fast Market today. We're also looking at Starbucks. We're also looking at Intel. Two more big names with, with earnings coming up nice. after the bell. So, you know, these are the days, guys, and you know this as just as well as I do. These shows kind of write themselves. There's so much to cover. It's just a matter of which ones can you get to uh, by the time the show is over. Isn't that cool, man? I mean, you know, folks, when Kevin just brought up Starbucks, this is pretty intense because, you know, Starbucks is trading at $76.46. Now, their main ingredients, folks, if we go over and we take a look at the what coffee. What is their main ingredient? Oh, my yeah, God. Coffee. You take you take a look at the coffee business. Just to give you an idea, you know, has your coffee gone down 25 to 30% in the last six months? Because the price of coffee has gone from $1.30 a pound to 93 cents. Not bad. Yeah. I, you know what, Tom? How funny is this? I asked my daughter, who you guys know, she sits two desks over from me yes. in our office, the same exact question. Coffee futures are on multi, multi uh, lows and... 
have you seen the price of your Starbucks go down at all? Maybe that is a reason why Starbucks stock and a lot of these company stocks are rising because the price of their product is going down, but their price isn't going down. So their margins keep expanding. And that and that may be one of the underlying stories in Starbucks earnings today. No, there's no doubt. And I can tell you, you know, it was intriguing, you know, just coming back from China, I saw so many Starbucks over there, and I went in one of them, okay? And the differential, even in China, Starbucks is like twice as expensive as everything else. I wasn't used to paying, you know, Tommy always jokes with me, I always pay $6 for a cup of coffee in the morning, which I do. Um, bottom line, over there, normal place, you'd be paying, you know, a buck for something, right? Starbucks, guess what? It was three and a half dollars. Came for that brand, I, baby. I said to the guy I was with, I says, look at this man. Even yeah. in China, they're getting, and they, um, yeah. They, I bet Nike's going to be more expensive over there, too, right? I mean, I'm no, just joking. No, as in, no, as no, in no, of course, that's, it's crazy, though, right? You're, that's, they that's, demand it. That, that brand, it is. you know, is something else, man. It is. In China, Tom, remember, Starbucks has all their chips in the center of the table in China. That's where they have, they think they're going to get their growth going forward, is their ability to grow in China and Asia. And the stores that I saw were huge, nice. not like right. over here. They nice. were three times, four times bigger than the Rent's stores probably here. cheaper, maybe land's cheaper, right, as opposed to in the U.S. city. Or what? They're, they're a, and what, what does Depends happen, what city, because but. their brand, yeah, this is a major city, so maybe, their yeah. brand, you know, is that... That, that mermaid. So okay, they don't yeah. even have to put any writing. Sure. It's just the mermaid. <laughs> and that green color, the right? Green they color got, mermaid, everyone right. knows it. Yeah. yeah, totally. And, you know, bottom line, I mean, when, when we take a look at uh, Microsoft out oh, here, man. you know. Yep. This, this subscriber business, man, is something else. They got know? the cloud. Yeah. You know, all these companies that are. You know, the, that, that the cloud drives their business, they're all doing extremely well. And, you know, I think it's a bigger picture, though. We have to take all these individual stories, Tom, and, and pile them all together and start to make the case that this economy is not as weak as everyone thought. Oh, I agree. You know, when everyone yeah. thought it was turning and heading to the downside, right. it looks like it was just catching its breath. And what the Fed has done with interest rates has really given this market a bunch of juice. And, you know, even on soft openings like we're seeing today, it wouldn't surprise me if we opened soft because of the foreign markets and then strengthen the rest of the day. Yeah, no doubt. And, you know, when you, when you look at the aspect of, yeah, you know, the Shanghai market had gone, gone down for a year and a half. Well, guess what? As of December 24th, that's up 34%. It was down 2% yeah. last night. But I absolutely agree with you that the slowdown, or whatever that was, was across the world, but it didn't affect the United States, man. That's the, right. that's the bottom line. You know, remember we were even talking yeah. about it that, hey, listen, you know, it, it seemed like everyone's talking about it. It's like, I'm saying to myself, man, everywhere you look, it seems like, you know, if you want a job, you get a job. If you want to get something, you can get something. And now right. we're on the other side of that. So it's going to be, like, okay, how are we going to go? This. This dollar move, Kevin, I can't even figure this out. I don't think anyone right. can because if you're... Well, I mean... I, I, in my, my theory, and we just got done talking about this with Ben Lichtenstein, sometimes the dollar is the driver for other currencies, right? And yeah. sometimes the dollar is its the effect of these other currencies. And you're seeing, you know, remember, everyone that trades foreign currencies understands that it's a relationship trade. And oh, some yeah. of these currencies in other countries are just getting walloped. Yeah. And, and and the do dollar based on that can't help but, but rise. Pretty intense, man. Listen, yes, folks, sir. right here, 45 minutes, you want to understand the markets upside down, check it out. Kevin, you have a great one, safe one, have a great weekend. We look forward to speaking to the next Tuesday. Thanks for having me on, guys. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Thank Kevin. You. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade.
The TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow Industrials are off uh, 244. We get the Nasdaq off uh, 15. S&P is down 14. And as we were talking with Kevin, we had uh, some selling there uh, inside the S&P and uh, particularly inside the uh, Nasdaq. You know, Nasdaq. We sure did. I was going to say, why don't you pull up the Nasdaq like yeah. we were just looking at, MQM. just because um, it's trading at 78.60 as of 10 a.m. And uh, where are we? Yeah, 78.06. I knew we were even lower than where we had pulled it up. Um, initially. It's a fast acceleration. It sure They're is. selling this baby. I mean, these are 10-minute bars. 78.60 is right there. And even when you look at, we were up, what is that high? 78.79. So you're talking about a full percent from where we were two hours ago. Yeah. yeah. So let's go take a look inside it because we, we certainly have the yin and the yang out here today. I was, gonna, I was waiting. Facebook, baby. Microsoft, yeah. yeah. Comcast had earnings today, too. We haven't talked about them. Go ahead. Okay, yeah. so Facebook is up uh, 6%. You got Land Research up 4.5, Microsoft 3.2, Comcast 2.5. Now, taken away from it, Xilinx is getting smoked. That's down 15.5%. You get O'Reilly Automotive down 6.5%, Mercado Libre is off 5, and JD.com is down 3. Okay. If I show you, you know, I was talking about this yesterday. What's actually, going on with Xilinx? There's I came so much out. going on. I haven't even heard about Xilinx. Isn't that crazy this, in terms of how much is in the market? This, this huge is, company down bit, yeah. Huge. And this was a parabolic move. Okay. I mean, if you take a look at this, you're going to see that that's about as parabolic as you can get. It sure is. Know? Um, we, we bring this back to yeah. uh, what's 62 that? bucks. That, yeah, that's, that's April 30th. That's, that's April, a year ago. That's a $62. Year ago. Straight up to 141, particularly the straight line move, and this where we got it got it so dangerous is the last four months. Yeah, you know, yep. and you know what you have here, folks. They made their numbers. They made numbers. Uh, then they turned around and they're buying a company, and it's like right off the bat, this was trading down ten dollars after after they came out with the numbers yesterday, and then okay. about 15 minutes later, uh, they said they're going to buy this company. 
Uh, and it's shot money. They're only buying it for like $4 billion. Or so. uh, $400 million, but okay. the market didn't like it <laughs> uh, at all. Okay. You know? Can I just take a look even on the... I like to see how uh, I can trade after. Yeah, so it didn't... It's a little muted, right? And then just yeah. falls right off the right. cliff, though, the second right. that they came out. Right. And then even this morning, look where it was. I mean, it was yeah. up to 126 right on the open. Right. So the market's saying. Took itself. That's right. Took itself. And, of course, inside the Dow Industrials, it's 3M that's putting, uh, what do we say, 100 and... It was 140 Dow points uh, as of the start of the program, right. as in, yeah, right. contributing 140 negative. So... So, natural gas. Natural gas. It is Thursday. We get those inventory numbers Thursday at 10.30. It's 10.21 on the dot. Jumping around here, we'll pull up the contract. So we're looking at the June contract, natural gas. Right now we're trading at 2.49 on the dot. A little bit of a sell-off this morning from about 9 till 10. We're up there at 2.51. So uh, we're jumping. Let's see. I'm going to start off with the 11 a.m. See kind of kind of exposure. So with 249, I think most of these are going to line up. Let me see if the noon is as well. Yeah, they're all going to line up with 250 being our price point that we can bad. gain exposure okay. from. Right, yeah. So on all of them, you're going to have about a penny head start to the downside. Okay, so you're going to have a little bit of intrinsic value in each one to the downside. And then you're going to be paying premium on both sides. So our 11 AMs, we're going to have 20 cents of exposure to the upside. This one's going to be out of the money. So the cheap one paying six bucks. The bearish one's going to be the expensive one with about a penny of intrinsic value in there, so you're paying 16 the difference being the $10, which represents a full penny, right? Yep. Um, so you're looking at 22 bucks, which is 2.2 pennies. It's not bad. Keeping in mind, if you're a little bit bearish, you got a penny already, head start to the downside, so you'd only need to make up you know, 1.2 pennies, basically, if it shoots down, but it was just at 251 so you'd have exposure. So 22 bucks at 11 a.m., jump it to the noons. You're out of the money one. Now, instead of six, they're making you pay eight, so two extra bucks, which is two tenths of a penny for yeah. that extra hour on the bullish side. And it's probably going to be a little bit similar. 17, so you're looking at 25. So you do take up about three or four dollars. Yep. Um, so two bucks on each side. Uh, so what is that? 30, excuse me, 25. So two and a half pennies plus a couple bucks in maybe commission. And we'll go to the dailies. Now, the dailies, let's see the, if these line up. So we always say this, right, to, to be aware. So the 8 till 2.30s, these give you, I'll pull up the bearish one because that's going to be a little bit. These give you 40 cents of exposure yep. till 2.30. But what always happens is why not take the one that's going to give you 50 cents of exposure Exactly. when they're ticking identically? Look at that. Right? I mean, it's always. And, and the, the reason is because there's almost a 0% chance this ever trades more than 40 cents right. prior to 2.30. But guess what? Like it's we stated, zero. it's yeah, not zero. Exactly. It might be 0.0001 over right. that, but right. guess what? There's a number, and they're not making you pay for it. So we'll jump right to the 50-cent ones. This is going to be a bearish trade. That's going to have about the penny of intrinsic value. That's costing you 23 bucks just for that leg. And then on the flip side, going from 250 all the way up to 3 bucks again, till 230, you're paying 12 instead of 8, right? So on the bullish side, we're paying 6 bucks for 11, yeah. 8 bucks for noon, 12 bucks for 230, and on the bearish side, pretty similar ramp up, so you're looking at 35 bucks till 230, three and a half pennies, and again, you get about a penny head start to the downside. Um, and we'll see now. Yeah, we're in the building area now, so we can expect a build because they'll be coming into the spring, right? Okay. Uh, meaning a natural gas. Ah, uh, yes, that is the number that they're yeah. looking for in here. Right. I believe it's 92. Um, and this was kind. Of, this is kind of a cool chart. And and this is just um, the recent weeks and their and their numbers. So zero being right here on the chart. And you okay. can see. So there were builds going from last April, and probably what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, through October, then you had but, dipping through draws, but, right? But you go from yeah. October, draws, basically, again, this, Weather, this, this is where cooler. zero is, yeah. if you can't see it, right? So anything below this pointer line, I'm, t I'm pointing here, is a draw. So you go draws, you had actually in December 28th, it came close, very small draw, some bigger draws into February, and then um, they're expecting about 92 to 94 um, you know, for a build. You know, interesting is that, like, when you look at that chart, it almost looks like, wow, this is the beginning of the draw, it looks like we're going to get more gas this year you know if that's the case because we're so close to the, these tops up here uh so my my point would be though is that we did the exact same thing coming into the end of april last year we saw an accelerated spike okay and we topped right where we are and what, what, what 92 about that's, that's 100. That's, that's, look at that, that that's that's a topping out at the end of april isn't that interesting well and that's it, it, there's just a similar acceleration from a draw 
tour builds in the exact same time, late April, early May. But we hit that number, and then it just kind of hovered from zero to 100 billion cubic feet for the entire um, period of the summer. Wow. Yeah? So we'll see where that shakes out in we sure will. a two, few minutes. $2.49 natural gas, and um, we'll see where that number hits. How about Amazon? Can we look at that actually? Oh, yeah. The numbers, if their revenue, yeah. um, uh, and the final before is, we jump to break. This is is after this... the close today, folks. It's going to be pretty pretty cool, and they come out right away too. Okay, so, so they, they don't they don't have anything to hide like Tesla. They don't they don't, no, they don't yeah. lay in the, like, the bushes. And exactly, wait. <laughs> exactly. Um, so is it first quarter of nineteen? Is yes, that what they're yeah. coming? Fifty nine nice. billion. Fifty nine point seven billion. They're looking for. Then they're looking for four dollars and sixty seven cents to the bottom line. And these growth numbers are just like over the top. So they sure are. AWS, they're growing at 48 percent. Third-party sellers, they're growing at 38 percent. Oh my God! 48 percent for AWS, 38 percent for third-party retail uh, sellers. And look, at, I mean, what even is is other? It's 20, a 24 billion dollar yearly category, and they're double. I, I they're think almost... that's the advertising. Okay. Uh, they haven't broken. That would make yet, sense. But yeah. I think that yeah. Yeah, Which, but definitely. That because the the spread on that AWS and advertising is much larger. Than and look at those earnings per share. 2020 next year, almost forty dollars a share. I think Bezos owns eighty million shares. So if he just took the earnings, that would be eighty-one sixty, three hundred twenty million dollars in earnings just for his shares for that company. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's off uh, 252, Nasdaq's off 9, S&P's off 13.5, and, and natural gas. So, comes in pretty much where analysts were expecting yeah. it. 92 billion cubic feet, estimate 92 billion cubic feet. Doesn't mean that it's not going to go a little haywire, jumping back. We got a bit of a spike. So, unfortunately, if you were trading volatility, right, you're spiking up, you had a penny head start to the downside. Max loss would be exactly at 250. We're trading at basically 250 right now. Um, but the, on, the, on the flip side, you're getting some action on a number that pegged right where it might have right. been expected. So you, right. could, you just could have rode, rode out where we were. Um, but nonetheless, a little bit of action to the upside, and we'll see where we shake out, man. 92 billion cubic feet. Let's see the table. Let's see where we're building here. Um, so this is the total inventory. It's okay. now 1.3 trillion. Wow. Um, and yeah, so weekly change of 92. Let's see. So the numbers, this this column here representing the change. This is the yeah. previous. This now. So let's see. The east representing 23 of that 92. Uh, south central being 45. 45. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, and then the mountain is the least, only four. So it's a little colder in the mountains. Maybe. Okay, yeah, right. Yeah. And uh, interesting, so a year ago, inventory is sitting at 1.28 trillion, so slightly above okay. where inventories were. Five year average, and that's what they've been saying, below the averages, right? right. Five year oh, average, time. about 1.7 trillion right. usually are in the, the, um, the build there. But hey, see what happens. Pretty wild, man. The. Uh, Market in general. Let, let's go take a look at this. So the yeah, NQs are staying with it. They're down 41. Yeah. That's when we pulled them up last time. Uh, Dow's getting a little more pressure. So if we look okay. inside the Dow, you got uh, Microsoft pulled back a little bit, even only up 3.5 percent now. Ah, yeah. uh, that's. It was putting 35 points, now they're putting 29. 3M accelerating, though. That was 140, now putting negative 156. Right. And overall, they're selling some of these Dow stocks. How about yeah. Caterpillar? I mean, just yeah. mammoth company in terms of market cap size. Might not be putting the points that 3M, um, but down, you know, $3.40, yep. more than 2%. We have 20, that's putting a negative 23 points in. You get Boeing 15, IBM 14, yeah. United Health 13. Even Apple off a bit. Yeah. So then uh, let's go back to the NDX for a second. So the NDX, uh, Facebook, well, let's go look at Facebook. Facebook, the, the, <laughs> the, if you heard this this morning, folks, okay, uh, this is where Facebook got fined 3 to $5 billion. They figured that they're going to use that. Um, and, but then they added a market cap of $35 billion. Is that, I mean, look, <laughs> Zuckerberg alone added $4.5 billion. <laughs> Not bad. You pay yeah. a $3 billion fine and you wake, you wake up the next morning and you mark your personal wealth yeah. is $4.5 billion higher. Yeah. So, you know, with that says too, but, but it's just like a bank, folks. <laughs> By the way, hey, you know, it's going to get part of the business. We can, no, we can, that's going to scare him next we, time. We, he, he hates making $4.5 billion. He's never going to do anything the FTC will find him over again. Man. You can do something wrong, you can pay the fine, and your stock goes. It's not supposed to be how it, it makes works. Money. That's, fines are supposed to uh, disincentivize people from doing things or companies from doing things. If you actually end up doing that, getting fined, and still ending up a net positive, that's not how it's supposed to work. No. But it seems like that's the recipe. That's the recipe. Yeah. Let's go take a look at uh, O'Reilly Automotive. Now, this is this is an equity that, you know, also has been out, out at good highs. You know, the low, uh, 224, the highs, 414. Um, oh. This is getting hit, yeah. It was. Yeah. It was at highs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So let's see what they oh, have man, to say. Oh, man, look at that. I know. Let's see, so... Okay, so the estimate was 405, they did 405. Comp sales, they were looking for plus five. Oh, no, no, this is just saying, hold on, no. Comp sales, three to five percent. That's the second quarter they're looking for yeah. forecast. They reaffirmed their year comp sale forecast. Um, see if I can first, oh, nope. I think they had a miss on first quarter comp. I saw some oh, headlines. Did they? Okay. I just see uh, first quarter comp sales missed S. Yeah, okay. missed, let's see what they got going in here. Here we go. Um, comp sales plus 3.2. They were looking, they missed it by almost a full percent. Four. Wow. Um, earnings per share forecast, pretty close, but below. Estimate was 469, 455 to 465. Uh, let's see. First quarter sales slightly below 2.41. Estimate was 2.44. Look at that gross margin. 
Man, we pay a lot for auto pods. Yeesh, wow. Gross margin, folks, 53.1%. When's Amazon getting into that business, man? That's, that's a <laughs> business that they love. And market cap-wise, huge company, $28 billion. So I just took a peek at it. You know, of course, um, if you're doing billions of dollars in sales and you're making 53% uh, profit margins, man, kudos. But they got to do something different, man, because those comp sales, not what the market was looking for. Amazing. Yeah. Let's go to John in Michigan. Hey, John, what's going on? Hey, Tom and Tommy. Love talking to you guys. Haven't been able to call you in a while. Hey, John. Hey, so much. I had Appreciate two it. things. One, I wanted to see if uh, you had any comment on McEwen uh, Gold. I called you about it maybe a month ago. And it looks like uh, that one is getting hammered pretty good. Yeah. I'd, I'd, this is, you know, this has been a problem. Um, you know, this is McEwen Mining, folks. The low is 130, the high is 252. You still get a shot position of 18.1%, and it can't seem to get any traction, man. Um, right. Yeah, we talked about that short position, man. They've had that for a long time on that stock. They have. So nothing has changed. And it's been and right. Other, uh, the thing that's thing so was, weird, it's been right. You know? Tommy this morning in the update was talking about uh, Tesla. Yes. Now, in Detroit, we have a show out here that goes, that's been on for over 30 years, and it's called Automotive uh, Insight by John McElroy. Okay. And he was talking today about self-driving cars and said that, you know, Tesla is by far way ahead of everybody else in that marketplace. You know, yesterday, Waymo uh, announced that they're going to use an all-American axle plant to assemble uh, self-driving cars here. Okay. And they're saying that, you know, yeah, that's great for Detroit, 400 jobs, but he said Tesla is so far ahead that it's not even funny. And he said another thing that Elon Musk has got on the table now is they've got this box that they can put on a Tesla car that for 5000 bucks they can turn any Tesla car on the road into a self-driving car. Interesting. And he says that's going to be coming real soon. So <clears throat> I just thought I'd throw that out there. I know Tesla, you guys talk about that. You know, he's the bulletproof guy right now, and I, I, I can only assume that's one of the reasons why. I, know? Yeah, no, I, I, can, I can see that. I mean, I wouldn't be buying the stock. This thing's just in trouble right now. I mean, it's, it's trying to go after this 244 <laughs> you know, level. Um, I've watched that thing for years and say, uh, it, you can't buy it at 100. You know, you can't buy it at 200. You can't buy it at 300. And, you, you know, yeah, I never did anything with it, and I just watch it, and it drives me nuts. Yeah. I'd be a little worried about Tesla right now, too, just from a fundamental perspective. And I agree with everything you said, John, which makes it even yeah. Yeah. more crazy, right? right, that there's still fear of because, I mean... You know, they had the huge drop-off on quarters, which makes sense, because if you didn't buy one yeah. in December when you're getting 7500 why are you yeah. going to buy one January or right. February or March? Um, but they have some issues, and I'm not sure that all of that technology for self-driving in the numbers Elon likes to talk about are coming that quickly. I mean, 5G is yeah. going to be huge. That's going to take off. Right. This is going to be coming down the pipe, but they're going to have some competition, man, by the likes of Google, Amazon, so... No doubt. No thanks so much, Painful. man. Thanks great much, great hearing from you. John, great to hear from you. Me. Thanks, man. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. 
Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow's down 250. We get the NASDAQ uh, flat. S&P's down 11. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Jack Gleason, as we do each and every Thursday at 40 past the hour. You can uh, check out Jack every trading day, folks, at MajorLeagueTrading.com. Jack Gleason, what's going on, brother? Hey, guys. How's it going? Um, today, I'm going to go over with you guys a uh, little gold in S&P, but how's Boston doing in the playoffs before we get into it? Yeah, how's that, huh? We're doing all I, right, I, man. How's that? We were just talking. What's, this, that... what's the series at? I haven't caught too many games. It's been well, pretty busy. Well, you missed the series, man, because we took out Toronto two nights ago in game seven. Um, oh, okay. That's right. And yeah. For basketball right now, I'm not sure because I got caught up in those those hockey playoffs, which have been wild, man. Um, but I was just saying to yeah. my dad that if the Bruins and the Celtics could ever close it out, they'd have the Grand Slam and hold all four titles simultaneously. And one year. Which is which is pretty insane. So <laughs> that we'll see. would be incredible. It's always I'm good to have a goal. You guys. <laughs> totally, man. Sick. Guys. Sick. Um, all right. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and just share my screen. So we're, I'm gonna get rid of my. Uh, radio face and actually show what I got here. Um, let me know if that pops up for you guys. Yep, we got you, Jack. Perfect. Gold. Okay, so this is gold, which, you know, I love talking about with you guys because I know yep. you guys are big uh, gold guys. And, you know, we obviously had a really nice rally into the end of 2018, had some continuation into the beginning of 2019, a little bit of deeper pullback here, uh, basically, you know, near the lows of what we had. But what I want to point out is Starting the rally of 2018, it was a halfway back sequence, and this is something that uh, I've had the conclusion that most bigger moves do start in halfway backs. So it was the low of the 16th, what is that, August? Too high. And you can see we rotated right in that 50% retracement and then just continued up uh, to our profit targets. Now, what I will look for after we actually hit this green line here is drawing that low from where the 50% was to the high. But we just went straight up, and we never traded it. We had just a different series of a high to high. Yes. Um, so we've recently now come back into that level. So that's that low from November. It's November 13th to the 2019 high, which occurred on the 20th of February. And we've just found a little bit of support there. You can see we have no daily closes 
uh, below that level, that first test right, right there was on the 18th. We got a bounce sideways, reversal candles at that level, and now we're getting back above, you know, this multi-day consolidation. So I'm hoping uh, that we could at least see a move back near to the you know mid mid range, which is around you know 1310, 1313. Um, so over the next couple days, I'm going to be looking for shorter term shorter term time frame buying opportunities uh, until we get into that higher time frame resistance level in gold near the 1313 level. Yeah, no, it's, it's you know I like what it's done, meaning coming back to the breakout area. You know, I had light volume on the on the rejected lower price, took off top side again. The thing that's pretty wild though is that the uh, that dollar broke top side in a huge way, and it's going to be interesting watching all those currencies today in correlation to the metals, because it might have been that they all just spiked, took everyone out. You know, if we, if we take a look at the the yen right now, what you're going to see is that you know the yen, folks. Okay, bottom line. Last night gets all the way up to a price point of 112. That's weakness. Then the Bank of Japan come out and, you know, bottom line said that, hey, listen, we're still going to just give money away. And you'd think that would get weaker, but it didn't. It just went, just did the opposite. It just got stronger, you know. And so all these moves, man, and the same if we go over to go to the euro. And all of these, the euro and the, you know, the yen affect gold in a big way. And the euro just rejected uh, 111. 111.18 or 111.48. So it's going to be inter interesting watching this thing move, man. You know. Yeah, I haven't been uh, following the currencies too closely, but wow, looking, you know, you pointed those out. I pulled up those charts. Those are some big trending moves. Isn't that crazy? Uh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Believe me, it's uh, and they're they're all out there too. The, can the Canadian dollar, the Aussie dollar, you, you name it. They all broke a very long consolidation. The consolidation was from last uh, October. You know, well, and so, but gold stays strong. That, that's the, the reason I just brought that up, Jack, is gold has actually stayed strong in spite of that dollar getting so strong. It's amazing. Yeah. And, you know, of course, gold is priced in dollars. It's like, okay, so uh -huh. what's going to break here, you know? Something's got to give, right? Something, um, something's got to give, man. That's how it works usually. <laughs> something's got to give, you know. So. All right, so I'll go over the S&P next. And just cool. this is another thing I wanted to show you guys. Uh, starting now, we're in the June contract for the futures uh, in the S&P. In the beginning of the, the contract rollover on the 8th of March, uh, that's the low of the contracts. We've been rallying basically since then. There was a halfway back here from that low to high uh, that traded at 27.96, and we had a multi-day consolidation there. That ended up completing profit targets. And you can see that negative 23% target was 28.98. We just went sideways, you know, one, two, three, four, five days there, and then broke above. When we break above that in a perfect sequence, which is, of course, never always perfect, but in this case, we then go from that previous high to high. So I have a pretty good example of an extension playing out. Um, and that extension traded on the 18th here and completed at 29.37 okay. uh, early this week. You can see that's where the price rejection actually came up. We closed at the, I believe right. that was, was that Tuesday or Monday. Uh, closed at that level. Couldn't get back above it yesterday, Wednesday. And then you can continue to see the price action rejection. So in this case, what I would argue for or begin to look for is a same anchor new high sequence, which is just that same anchor. Um, it's a fib drawn from the high of the 21st of March to the next high. And then the two levels I watch are the 38% retracement and the 50% retracement. So that would be 29.11 half in the S&P June futures contract would be the 38% retracement. And below that, we got 29.03. So those are the two levels I'm gonna be looking for. Uh, you know, Whether that trades today or tomorrow or the overnight session, yeah. we'll find out, or maybe not at all. But uh, those are two levels that I really just like the way, um, you know, on the hourly chart specifically that, uh, this 29.12 area lines up because it's a retest of the point of the breakout from Tuesday, right. which I always like to line up. No, so. no, there's no doubt, man. I know. And it's just, you know, it seems like we lay it highs. Doesn't look like it can break. Breaks to another high. Lay it highs. You know, same thing. Like even like today. I mean, you know, you get the Dow down 2.30, but the S&Ps, I mean, they're only down eight and a half. That's nothing. You know. Well, the, yesterday, you know, the, we had Facebook and uh, Microsoft earnings after the bell, and the S&P had opened, and, you know, we had a quite quite a little bit of a pop, but with Facebook being, I think it turned all the way up to 200, Microsoft, 
Um, you know, huge move to the upside as well. There was a little bit of a move, but like there wasn't a significant move to the upside where you would have been like, hey, like I, I thought the market was a little weaker because, you know, we were in the lower lows, lower lows, lower lows, lower lows, all the way into close. And then you got that follow through here today. Right. That definitely shook some, uh, shook some people out here on the lows. So, yeah. Now, that's a great point, Jack, because when right before the close yesterday, folks, there was a big sell on that S&P and went right down right before four o'clock. As soon as the numbers come out, flipped all the way back top side. But guess what? This morning, right back down. Right. Yeah. Listen, folks, you can check out Jack every trading day, MajorLeagueTrading.com. Jack, you have a great week, safe week. We know it's uh, warmer in Chicago right now. It's a beautiful thing, brother. Take care, guys. Good talking. Thanks, Jack. Man. Have a great one. Have a safe one. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow off 222. Come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, natural gas. Uh, so, so quick check. We got a little bit of a pop. 251. Still not too dramatic, right? Right. And it did. It came in at estimates, so we'll see what happens. But 251 on that price in that natural gas. Let's go to Dave in Boston. Hey, Dave, what's going on? Gentlemen, good morning. It's uh, good to hear the dynamic duo back together again. Hey, man, what's happening? Good to hear from you, too. Keeping it together. Uh, look, I... I couldn't think of anyone better to ask uh, for risk assessment. Uh, I was in a PayPal, well, actually gapped down after the market yesterday, gapped up this morning. Um, 
probably regained about half of the gap up. Your assessment on um, options expiring tomorrow and, and what's going on, is it better to close out early? Does it look like uh, yes. it has any more to the downside in your take? No, I, I'd close it out. I, so uh, you, you, have a, you have a call or a put? A put. You have a put. I, okay, so I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, I'm just looking to assess where I'm at. I mean, it gave back, it took back half of it uh, this morning, whether yeah. I just hold on. I, been watching China close lower over the course of the evening. Yeah. No, um, just no... wondering if it would have a rollover effect into, uh, yeah. you know, the closeout. I think you could get 108 again on PayPal here. That 108.52 that hit, you know, 20 minutes ago, you, you could All get right. that, you know. So, yeah, I'd hang, I'd hang tough a little bit longer. You so know, below 109 someplace, it yeah. makes sense to. Yeah. I think you're kind okay. of looking. Just that's the intraday my... low is... Intraday. That's, that's what I'm looking at. That that intraday low can get hit, man. You know? Okay. Cooking, brother. All right. Thanks for the call, All man. All right, guys. Have a great one. You Thank too. you. Stay right there, folks. We've got Fast Mac coming up next. And we get our members, Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. Be back this afternoon. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, man. Wow! Go get them, folks.